<risa> este es tu pollo.
Good evening, Emerson and Elizabeth. How are you today? Good evening, teacher. Good How evening. How are you? I'm doing better than yesterday. Uh, thank you for asking. Glad to hear that. Nice. And Emerson is joining Jose Enrique too. I hope that you have had a good Friday and a good weekend <laughs> is coming. So I hope to use rest. And uh, we're going to start today's class. I'm going to share, we're going to practice some vocabulary. Let me share my screen with you. Okay, there we go. So yesterday we completed this exercise. This was vocabulary. Um, about uh, branding and then we have a pay work exercise and we have two set of questions to guide the branding process of a company or person so um, about product branding we have uh, this set of questions is there a volunteer to read the question we're going to just read the questions and there is not much to do here. We're going to then practice another um, vocabulary with some verbs. Uh, volunteers to read product branding questions. Marilyn, thank you so much. Okay, product branding. What does your business product do? What problem do you solve for your customer? Who are your their main competitors, direct or indirect? What is the primary message you want to convey to your customers? What are five adjectives or words that best describe your company? Excellent. Thank you so much for reading, Marilyn. Then we have another set of questions that can guide the branding, uh, the personal branding process. Volunteer to read them. Volunteer. Hey, teacher. Thank you, Martin. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. How do you feel today, teacher? I feel a little bit better, but this is my red eyes. Can you see it? It's horrible. <laughs> it looked like black. No, no. I can no. see. It's, uh, it, this is the blood. Here. Ah, yeah. yeah. I, I can see. <laughs> but it's you are better. Better than yesterday. It hurts less, <laughs> a little less. But thank you for asking. Okay. Where are we are you going to read? Yes, thank you. Uh, personal branding or personal? Personal uh, branding. Uh -huh. Okay. What does your business product do? What problem do you solve? I'm, I'm sorry, at the personal uh, branding. Uh -huh. Thank okay. you. <clears throat> what service do you have do you have to offer to people? What do you do that makes your you stand out from everyone else? Who are your biggest competitor competitor and what are they doing to brand themselves? Themselves. What do you want your personal brand to convey? What adjectives do you want people to associate it with, with you as a product and why? Okay, thank you much for reading. Uh, Marilyn and Magdiel, you did a very good job. We just have a couple of words that are uh, like very technical vocabulary. And this is what I wanted to practice it. Um, so competitors at the like the um, in this 
competitors. It's like in the second syllable that we need to stress this word, competitors. You can repeat at home, competitors. And then we have the word convey. That's like you see here, the pronunciation is like the same way that is written, convey. And then in the other side, the same word, competitors. Uh, the stress is in the second syllable, competitors. And then, then you did a very good job with pronunciation. And we just have, um, this is the only thing that we're going to do with this set of questions, just to practice um, pronunciation and to know what type, what are the kind of questions that can help us to guide the branding process. Um, so we're going to move to this conversation because uh, um, there is a grammar point here with these verbs, make and get. So as you know, those verbs have, um, Lots of collocations that can go together with some uh, phrases and they have different meaning. So that's what we're going to practice. We're going to be practicing this vocabulary. I think it's going to be very, very useful for us. Um, let's practice this conversation. This is a conversation between Andrea and Vincent. Uh, volunteer to, to role play. I need two, two volunteers. Marilyn, thank you. Guadalupe, Alexandra. Excellent. Marilyn and Alexandra. You can start, Marilyn. Okay. Watch this TV ad. They are selling shoes that can make your plot like a feather. They are very popular at work. I will never get a pair of toes. They are too expensive. I wouldn't either, but a brand that delivers what is promises makes customers buy it regardless of price. Maybe they really make your faster. The marketing department sure is good because they get all these people to buy their shoes. I think I will buy a pair to see what all the fruits is about. I am mute. Okay, excellent job. Now let us change role and Alexandra, you can start and then Marilyn, you continue with Vincent. Okay, watch these DB ads. They are selling shoes that can make your float like a feeder. They are very popular at work. I would never get a pair of those. They are too expensive. I wouldn't either, but a brand that deliver what it promised make customers buy it, regardless of price. Maybe they really make you faster. The marketing department sure is good because they get a lot of these people to buy their shoes. I think you know, I would buy a pair to see that all the fuss is about. Okay, excellent. You did it beautiful. Thank you so much for uh, helping us with the with this role play. Uh, do you have any question about vocabulary or? What is the, the meaning make it your float? Yes, it makes I don't see it. And the, the first make you float. Ah, make you float. It's como que te yes. hacen flotar. Okay. Pero en este caso se está hablando como de trabajo y cosas así, ¿cómo sería eh, el uso? Eh, aquí, como está diciendo que el, el TV ad, el, el, el TV ad es un advertisement, el ad es como el uh -huh. short advertisement, está vendiendo zapatos que te pueden hacer flotar como una pluma. Uh -huh. Ok, ok, ok. Y en el... the, the end, 
get all these people to buy? En, al final, get all. Mm -hmm. Es como hacer, pero ajá, es lo que les decía, que hay colocaciones que con make y get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Entonces, eso es lo que vamos a practicar, cómo hacer esas colocaciones con make y con get. Estos okay. son verbos causativos, le llaman, que es como, eh, son, eh, son como frases armadas y es, estos hacen eh, causativos porque causan algo o hacen algo. En este caso dicen que te hacen a ti flotar. Entonces, el make lleva, des, si usamos make, tiene que llevar después un, un como objeto a quien vea. En este caso eres tú, make you float. Y el get eh, también eh, puede, eh, en este caso se está usando como para causar algo. ¿Qué es lo que va a causar? Hacer que toda esta gente compre. Get all these people buy. Ese es el uso que se le está dando aquí a make y get como verbos causales. Y hay otras colocaciones que son las que vamos a estar practicando más adelante. Eh, son muy útiles. Is there any other question? Yes, and fuse. Uh, when say, I think I will buy a pair to see what all the fuse is about. Uh -huh. is what is the fuse about? The fuse is, is como eh, de que todo es el escándalo. Mm -hmm. Fuse is, is the significado de fuse es escándalo. Mm -hmm. Como de que, de que se trata este escándalo que toda la gente quiere, entonces yo voy a comprar unos para ver de qué se trata el escándalo, a ver si es cierto. Any other question? Is there any other question? Okay. Emerson and Francisco are still working. Thank you so much for letting us know. Uh, now, the next part is at part three. Look at the conversation and complete the sentences below. It's um, a brand that delivers what it promised. Um, so we complete here with this verb. That's the collocation that we are talking about. Uh, it wouldn't either, but a brand that delivers what it promises makes customer buy. So here we will complete using makes, making the, to complete the sentence. In number two, what is missing there to complete the sentence? What is missing here? Makes. Uh huh. They what? make. Oh. Uh, make or get. Ah, uh, then the second get. Excellent. Uh -huh. They get all these people to buy buy buy. Uh -huh. To buy their shoes. Um, and that's it. And now in the grammar here we have the birds make and get. What is the difference when we use make? After make is someone, okay? And the same here with get. Es son eh, verbos como, aquí se están usando como causante, ¿verdad? Ellos causan eh, una respuesta, una reacción, una acción. Eh, entonces, esa acción depende. Si, si hacemos con make, el verbo va a ir en forma base, okay? Si usamos make, Luego iría el someone, que sería a quién, ¿verdad? Eh, 
Y luego el verbo en forma base, quiere decir que no se va a modificar. Como ven aquí, the marketing department makes, porque estamos hablando, de inter, es una tercera persona singular, es una cosa, es el departamento. Por eso aquí make va conjugado en tercera persona, makes. Y luego, ¿a quién? Que ese sería el someone. Employees. Y luego el verbo en forma base, revise. Ok, the marketing department makes employees revise goals and metrics every month. La diferencia con get es que el verbo va a ir en infinitivo. Eh, el someone eh, siempre iría después del verbo, del get, ¿verdad? Get, luego el someone y luego el verbo, pero este verbo en infinitivo, que es la acción de la que estamos hablando, ¿verdad? Eh, tenemos I can get a quien. Customers, y ahora el verbo en infinitivo, to love. Okay? Esa es la única diferencia en cuanto a si usamos make o get como para expresar un, un causante, ¿verdad? Hacer que alguien que. Ambos significan lo mismo. La diferencia va a ser eh, la, el verbo, la acción. En este caso, la acción iría en forma base, en el caso de que usemos make. Si usamos get, el verbo iría infinitivo. Quiere decir que vamos a usarlo con to y eh, pues no se modificaría como decir tercera persona. No, es va en infinitivo, simple. Eh, y acá pues tenemos ejemplos usando eh, en diferentes tiempos. Como ven la primera está en simple, presente simple. Entonces conjugamos. El, el verbo make a presente simple. En este caso, por ser tercera persona, en este caso es it, tercera persona singular, una cosa, makes. Eh, aquí, como es en pasado, se conjugó a made. Y pues aquí está en pasado también. Pero el verbo, la acción que está acá, va a ir en forma base, simple. Ok. Y aquí están los ejemplos. The marketing department makes employees revise goals and metrics every month. Another example. The poor identity of the brand made people look for product from different companies. Then the brand experience offered by Samsung made customers prefer their mobile phone. Then the examples with get. I can get customers to love our premium services. The project manager said it is not possible to get all those customers to feel identified with the brand in a short time. And the last example, the advertising events will get people to order product online more often. And now the, we have a couple of exercises here in which we're going to make use of the grammar explanation in this box. Use the verbs in parentheses to complete the sentences. And here we have the parentheses, what we're going to use in this case, and buy, uh, get, buy. Make and like, get and help, make and vote, and make and take. The number one, it's already done. Here we need it to use make and try. So we go to number one, customer attention. Como es la atención de lo que estamos hablando, entonces ESM. En presente simple se conjugó makes. The customer's attention makes companies. Y el verbo try en forma base. ¿verdad? Como lo que explicamos acá anteriormente. Eh, si no hay preguntas. Do you have any question? No questions? Okay, this exercise is on page 28. If you are using your PDF file, you can modify it there. Um, let's do the number two together. It is marketing health business. And we have get and buy. Marketing health businesses. How would you complete this one? Number two, with get and buy.
Okay, volunteer. Okay, we start uh, to make it easier. Um, okay, excellent, Victor. So we said, um, let me stop the control. Thank you so much, Victor. That is correct. Marketing help. Businesses get customers to buy, and we need the verb in infinity. Very good job. Let me know when you finish the rest. Mira, teacher, si es igual que como ha puesto ahí, sería we can make people like our product. Yes, that's correct. We can't. It would be make people like. Uh -huh. okay. Excellent. En el siguiente sería get only store get the loyal customer to help with. Yes, online store get their lawyer customer to help. Excellent, Manili.
in the party, the marketing director make people vote for the best ad. Uh -huh. The marketing director makes or make? Makes. Excellent. Makes people but mm -hmm. oh, excellent. We're just missing the last one. Volunteer for the last one. Top businesses. Top businesses. Make. Excellent. Make. Make the, their employees take. Uh huh. Employees take. Uh, that is correct. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing with us. I hope that everybody has the same answers. And in this, it, um, this for this moment, <laughs> so I'm going to have to delete all the annotation. Okay, here in the description is to unscramble the word is brand. It's and here we have this vocabulary. I guess the same here. I guess that we worked on this vocabulary exercise. Um, okay, let's read the instructions because I am not finding it. The exercises is brand, and it says that there is a scramble word there. It's the way people recognize the brand. It might be through the logo or or their associated visual. So we need to unscramble here oh, and write. That can be brand. Okay, so we use the first word, brand identity. identity. Yes, brand identity is the way that people recognize the brand. It might be through the logo or other associated visual. So we need to unscramble the words here and place it here. Yeah, once organized, we place it here and the description help us to Guess what is the word? So brand, and it says it, this other scramble word is the idea of the brand that people develop in their minds and that what they expect from the brand.
Which word do you think is the number two? Imagine. Excellent. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Number two is image. Brand image is the idea of the brand that people develop in their minds and what they expect from the brand. And let's see number three. Is the emotional or personal qualities that customer associate with a particular brand. Personality. Mm -hmm. Personality. Very good. Number four, brand a combination of everything that a customer goes through while purchasing and using that brand. Experience. Excellent. Experience. This is how a brand stands out of the crowd. It's a little, little, little bit difficult, but not too difficult. No idea? Uh, differentiation. Excellent. That's correct. Differentiation. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here that we can have completed this and do another share. Okay, this is our guide. As you may see, these are the exercises that we already worked on then with the kind of the birds make and get and then having someone and a kind of verb it says there are more i i must decíamos que eh, el punto aquí era discutir sobre make y get usados como verbos causales que causan que una persona haga o realice alguna acción como veíamos make y luego el persona y luego el verbo en forma base Tenemos también con get, luego la persona y luego el to más el verbo. Cuando sea get va a ser eh, el verbo en infinitivo usando to. Ahora hay otros verbos causales como have también. Luego va la persona y luego el verbo en base, en forma base. Eh, recordando que la, la videoconferencia es como para ampliar conocimiento, el vocabulario. Especialmente cuando tenemos algo en negrito en las conversaciones. En este caso era make y get como verbos causales. Hay más. Eh, por ejemplo, help, have, let. Entonces, eh, 
eh, estos tienen algunas eh, diferencias en cuanto al, a la acción que, que vamos a, a hablar o, o, o a referirnos, ¿verdad? Que los verbos estos causan. Y tenemos una pequeña explicación aquí adicional a lo que ya teníamos en el material que descargaron de Insafor. It says, the birds make, get, have, help, and let are the most common causative birds in English. Así que estos son los más comunes, no solo es make y get. Ampliamos un poquito con have, help y let, uh, diciendo son los más comunes en inglés. They are called causative verbs because they cause something else to happen. Por eso se llaman así, porque ellos causan, provocan que algo más pase. Um, hay, hay más. Um, por ejemplo, enable, allow, keep, hold. Words require and persuade. Pero vamos um, a practicar solo con, con los más comunes, que son make, get, have, help, y let. Y tenemos aquí make. Words or compel someone to do something. That's just, la diferencia es como algo eh, más, eh, más fuerte, como un poquito forzado, ¿verdad? Es... es um, Grammatical structure, la que ya discutíamos anteriormente, make, luego el someone o la persona y el verbo en forma base. Y luego pues el make es el que podemos conjugar dependiendo del tiempo. Si es presente, nada más tenemos en cuenta que si es tercera persona singular, le agregamos s y decimos makes. De lo contrario será make. Si es una oración o algo en pasado, vamos a decir made. Y así sucesivamente. Tenemos algunos ejemplos aquí. She made her children do their homework before going to bed. Another example. His grandmother made her grandson send a postcard to his parents. Their parents made the boys clean the house after the party. Entonces aquí un poquito más de información adicional con el make. Es como ya un poquito más forzado, ¿verdad? Como ya hacer por orden de, si se fijaron en los ejemplos, eh, está como es como una, hay un poquito de fuerza ahí en la, en, en la provocación de hacer que la persona haga algo. Um, es darle una orden, una indicación. Y el get es... Um, Arrange for someone to do something. ¿Eh? Es, es como hacer, a, a, es un tipo más de arreglo, más como, como hablado, no es tan forzado como get. Uh -huh. Entonces esa es la diferencia en cuanto a significado. Si uso make y get, digamos que el make es un poquito más fuerte. Eh, y la diferencia también en cuanto a la acción, ¿verdad? Que si es make, va a ir el verbo en forma base. Y si es con get, vamos a usarlo en infinitivo, usando to. Y tenemos algunos ejemplos para que nos quede un poquito más claro. I'll get the architect to modify the plan. The teacher got the children to tie up the classroom. The old lady got the boy next door to move her lawn. Any question? No questions? No. Okay. And then with have, tenemos have is ask or request somebody to do something. So en el ask, si sí es eh, más eh, pedirle a alguien que haga algo. So es, um, y la estructura, como ven ahí, es have, eh, luego la persona y luego el verbo en forma base. Eh, no será en infinitivo, sino que será similar como con get, que el verbo lo usamos en su forma base. Y lo mismo, ¿verdad? El que se conjuga es el have. Si es tercera persona y estamos en presente con la oración, va a ser has. Y si de lo contrario será have. Luego si es pasado, será had. Y luego la acción principal, la que estamos causando, o, o en este caso pidiéndole a alguien que algo, eso va a ir en forma base. Aquí algunos ejemplos. I'll have my assistant call you to confirm the date. Es como si le, le voy a pedir a mi asistente que 
te llame para confirmar la fecha. Ok. Uh, the architect had his secretary make copies of the plans. And then the surgeon had the nurse take the patient's temperature. Okay. Yeah, este es como más, eh, como más hacer a alguien o pedirle a alguien que haga algo. A diferencia de get y make es hacer. Hacer que alguien haga algo. Son más forzaditos y el más fuerte es el make. Um, ¿Preguntas? El have también se puede hacer como eh, con, o, con una cosa. And solo pues have, thing, and past participle. Puede ser que también lo vean así. I need to have a photograph taken from my new passport. Okay. They had their house painted, sorry, house. They had their house painted before putting it up for sale. My car has broken down. I need to have it repaired. Bueno, es que necesitamos eh, que alguna cosa ah, tenga alguna acción o haya alguna acción en alguna cosa. Se usa o, o se, se transmite en pasado participio, como vieron acá en los ejemplos. Necesito que una foto te, sea tomada para mi pasaporte, que mi casa sea pintada antes de ponerla en venta y así es como se utiliza cuando nos vamos a referir el hub causativo sobre una cosa. Eh, questions? Vamos a intentar hacer un ejemplo con cada uno. Un ejemplo con make, uno con get, uno con have plus person y uno con have plus thing. Les voy a dar tiempo y luego pueden compartir sus oraciones ya sea por el Meeting chat or verbally. Como se sientan más cómodos. In the meantime, I'm going to put some eye drops. Se me está sacando mucho el ojo. Voy a apagar un ratito la cámara, pero voy a estar aquí si tienen alguna pregunta.
teacher one question. Yes. Uh, if we are using two persons with cat, we uh, we articulate the the verb, the get pronoun. No, no. Oh, okay, it's in base form. Oh, wait. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm reading Alexandra's work here. It says the professor makes his student investigate about El Salvador history. The marketing department get 20 people to learn about the project. My cousin have his dad draw his homework. Excellent. Very well done. We're just missing the have plus thing and past participle. <laughs> Oops. I'm sorry about the question. Uh, I, I don't. The question was about get. Yes. In the third person singular. Yeah. If it is present. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. In that case, yes, you have to to um to modify get into the simple present, like uh, my cousin gets. Okay. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. For the third um, person, yes, you change it in make makes get gets. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. And um, another question. Um, I don't know if it's the same, but I, I guess that maybe the second form, uh, for have, is like passive voice. For. Um, the second form that have plus thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's yes. like participle, it's like an example of participle. Past participle. The verb, el verbo si va en pasado participio, like taken, painted, repaired. Mm -hmm. Bueno, el, el, el have, el auxiliar have, eso lo va a conjugar dependiendo si está presente, va a ser have or, um, eh, or has, dependiendo de la persona, ¿verdad? Aquí como dice, I need to have, es primera persona, entonces por eso está como have. Pero si fuera tercera, está igual, ¿verdad? Lo pasamos a has. Eh, luego, si el, pero siempre el verbo principal va a ir en pasado participio. Nada más el, el have es el que se va a ir modificando si es presente o si es pasado. Aquí como they had, para el verbo principal, si se fija, taken, painted, ese es el que va a ir en participio. No sé si respondí su pregunta. Eh, sí. Ok, excelente. Y perdón por el español, pero con la gramática siento más fácil explicar en español.
Okay, I'm checking. I, I lost the screen. Okay. Let me see. Fleur got me to is it to study more English. I made the busy work. Marilyn had her husband cook dinner for her. Excellent sentences, Mario. Continue. We are missing the one with um have plus thing and past participle. But very well done. Excellent sentences. I'm glad to see that you're um completing your sentences. And they are great. Great sentences. Solo me falta ver ejemplos con have plus thing plus past participle. But great, Mario and, and Alexandra are doing an excellent job. Las demás eh, estamos esperando. No sé si van a compartir like in the meeting chat or if you're going to read them. But yes. Yeah. Y les puse un ejemplo con have plus thing plus past participle. For example, I will have my hair cut next month.
Nice sentence, Mario. I can never get my daughter to wash the dishes. Great. That is grammatically correct. Excellent. Is there anybody else who like to share sentences? Maybe a volunteer to read their sentences since I get that. Only Mario and Marilyn have been writing in the meeting chat their sentences. Excellent sentences, by the way. Anybody else? Is there any other volunteer to share the sentences? No more volunteers? Okay. So we're going to stop sharing for a little while. So I'm going to check attendance. Uh, let's start Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Alex Enrique Lemus. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Cecia Noemi Ramos. Elizabeth Stephanie Vasquez. Emerson Alexander Lopez. Uh, Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Gertrudis Aymara Paquerano. Okay, um, um, I see that you are there, but only Francisco and Alexander, they told me that they were working, but the rest, I don't know. Uh, Guadalupe Alexandra? Present. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa? Present. Thank you. Jose Enrique. Present. Okay, thank you. Uh, Yulisa Yamile. Carla Ivania. Present teacher. Luis Javier. Gracias, Miss. Thank you. Martiel Esaú. Present teacher. Thank you. Manuel Alexander. Manuel Alexander Vázquez. Okay. Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Victor Noé. Present teacher. Thank you. Vidal Byron Ruiz. Present teacher. William Alexander Rosales. Uh, 
Okay, that's it for attendance. And I had a couple of sentences here. Uh, Luis had his leg broken in a car crash. Okay, that's nice. Very good. Uh, or here, um, solo creo que iría had en pasado, right? Y se la quebró en un accidente. Luis had his leg broken in a car crash. Excelente. Tenemos una con had plus one thing and then the past participle. Excellent, Carla. Thank you so much for sharing. And yes, <laughs> el típico aquí y, y el después. Let me know when you finish. <laughs> Always. Now, he needs to have his care, his car repaired before tomorrow at 6 p.m. Very good, Magdiel. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, tenemos dos ejemplos con el have y una cosa, and then past participles. Correct. Thank you so much. Manuel, Carlos, and Elizabeth, uh, thank you for confirming that you are present uh, for today's class. Thank you so much. Let me. Take notes, Elisa, Carlos, and okay. Well, let's continue working here. Let me your screen back again. Okay, and then uh, help and let are some other positive verbs. Uh, Como ya estamos mencionando, hay otros eh, que son también bastante comunes como causative verbs. Ya definimos qué es un causative verb, cómo utilizarlos. Eh, help y let son others. Um, help is assist someone or make it possible or easier for them to do something. Y si sabemos el help, luego ir a la persona o la cosa. Y luego el verbo en forma base. Um, igual de igual forma si hay algo que conjugar en algún tiempo específico sería el help ¿verdad? Um, uh, the use of the infinitive to after the verb help is also common both are grammatical and there is no difference in meaning aquí tenemos algo Eh, que nos dice que cu cuando estamos usando help um, como causative verb, se puede usar en forma base el verbo principal o con to, en infinitivo. Eh, no le cambia el significado. Ambas formas son gramaticalmente correctas. y eh, No hay diferencia en significado, como ya lo mencionamos. Y por, tenemos algún ejemplo acá, utilizando los de las dos formas. Help someone do something or help someone to do something. Okay. Eh, tenemos el ejemplo. The dictionary helped him understand the meaning or podría ser the dictionary helped him to understand the meaning. Either or. Both are correct. Y tenemos, eh, como ven aquí, uh, the, her new glasses help the old lady read more easily. The um, intensive preparation helped the athlete win the race. Aquí lo tenemos en presente y luego help conjugado en pasado. El verbo principal, en este caso read, uh, win, ese va a ir en forma base. Y puede ser también infinitivo con to. Podríamos decir acá... Um, the her new glasses help the old lady to read more easily. And then in the next intensive preparation help the athlete to win the race. Uh, both are correct. Um, let let is um, the meaning of permit or allow something to happen. The grammatical structure for this is um, let the person and then thing plus bird in base form. Example, Eva's father won't let her drive his car. You shouldn't let your children watch unsuitable programs. Tom was careful not to let the dog sit on the sofa. 
And we have a note here that says that verbs allow and permit are more formal of saying let. Se puede usar allow or permit, que son más formales que let. Y el significado siempre es eh, permitir a uh, que algo suceda. Okay? Entonces podemos usar allow y permit, que son más formales que let. However, with allow and permit, we use to with the verb. Ok, si vamos a utilizar allow o permit para que nuestra oración sea más formal, en ese caso, el verbo principal sí tendría que ir en infinitivo. Uh, for example, I don't allow my children to watch violent programs on television. Our teacher does not permit us to eat lunch in the classroom. Another example, our school permits students to use the sports facilities after school hours. And finally, my mother allows me to drive her car. Do we have questions with this? Now let's practice with help and let. If it is possible, you can also practice with allow and permit. It's only four sentences. Solo serían cuatro oraciones. Por una con help, una con let. Y las más formales, allow and permit. Y recordemos que con allow y permit, el verbo sí o sí tiene que ir en infinitivo con to. Para que esté gramaticalmente correcto. Let me know if you have any questions. And if you want to write your sentences in the meeting chat, you are more than welcome. And it's preferable because uh, it's easier for me to see that you're, if the sentence is grammatically correct. So let's do so. You have, uh, let's see, six minutes. And then we, we will finish this exercise and continue with the next slide.
Let it go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, time's up. Do you have any um any example with help? Okay, it says can you let me uh can you let me touch your pet okay uh that's good only one bird should be removed like that can you please let me touch your pet that's that would be correct thank you so much the walking stick helped my grandmother walk easily my father let my sister have a boyfriend excellent sentences Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, so we have with help and let. Thank you so much. Do you have any example with allow and permit? Okay, the police officer allows people. Ah, something is missing. Something is missing. The sentence it looks good, but something is missing. Me falta algo a la del police officer. What is it? What is it? Veamos qué falta. to enter excellent the police officer allows people over the age of 18 to enter in the concert excellent very well done technology help us make our lives easier my job won't let us work from home oh that's so sad 
But the good thing is that your sentences are excellent, grammatically correct. Thank you so much, Carla. And also Guadalupe Alexandra. Uh, Mario, excellent job. Thank you so much for sharing. Is anybody else? Okay, so let us continue then. Uh, to continue working with uh, vocabulary, it's very, I hope that it helps you and that you use it in your real life setting. So as you see, it's very, very useful um, for our day, daily lives. Uh, speaking and scenario situations that we can use those verbs. So to continue with this, working with our vocabulary, we have everyday annoyances vocabulary. And yes, we will continue practicing with get and make in other way. Vamos a seguir practicando con frases or idioms con get y make. Um, y para eso tenemos, eh, vamos a estarnos enfocando en everyday annoyances. Uh, have you ever had problems similar to this? Do you agree or disagree with this comment and why? Let's see. Let us look at the picture in the first scenario. It says, the thing that I hate is when kids ride their scooters on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Then the next picture, there is a lady waiting as outside of a movie theater. That's this, she said. One thing that bothers me is when my friend don't show up on time for things. Hmm. Then we have another scenario. You see people traveling probably on the subway and there is a lady standing and another sitting with their shopping bags next to her. So it says, something that bugs me is people who take up to sit on a crowded bus. That's very inconsiderate. And the last situation, it's the thing I can't stand is co-workers who have their cell phone ringing on their desk. Mm -hmm. All right, do you agree or disagree with these comments and why? Okay, well, I, I agree with the last one. The thing I can stand is co-workers who leave their cell phone ringing on their desk. To start with, I think it is not necessary to have um, the cell phone with sound on. If you are working, I think that you can, or you should have your phone in um vibration mode so it doesn't the sound doesn't bother or interrupt other people's activities that's what i think what about you do you agree or disagree with those comments No comments on this? Yes, for me, it's a problem when someone in the bus have two seats and the bus is very crowded and the people oh, they have a big a space and um, no se lo dan a alguien más <laughs> eh, 
the person don't give the seat to another another person. Yes, excellent. They don't permit someone else to 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 use that seat, right? So yes, excellent. Yes, it, that is really inconsiderate and people just don't care. <laughs> Thank you so much for your comments. Anybody else? Nobody? Okay, then let's move to the next slide. We have a listening and speaking exercise. It really irks me. Hmm. Listen to Jane and Kyle talking about her hurting situations. What bother each person? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing this part so I can get the audio. Okay, we're going to do this listening. Um, let's get ready with your notebooks. Okay, so we're going to listen for part A. We're going to listen to two people, Jane and Kyle, talking about irritating situations. And what you have to take notes about is what bother each person. Only take notes. What what is what bother Jane, and then what what is that um, bothers Kyle? Ready? Ready for the listening? I'm ready. Okay, I'll play the recording. Unit 10, The Art of Complaining. Lesson A, page 80. Exercise 2, It Really Irks Me. Part A. Listen to Jane and Kyle talking about irritating situations. What bothered each person? One, Jane. Hi, Jane. Say, are you okay? You're looking a bit tired. Oh, I am. It's my neighbors. Oh, so they're acting up again, huh? Yep, unfortunately they are. What is it this time, loud music again? Well, not exactly. You've been to my apartment, right? Yeah, I've been there once. It's a nice place. Well, thank you. So you remember I live on the top floor, right? Well, last night around midnight, my neighbors decided to go up on the roof. The roof? What for? Apparently they had this guy in from out of town and they wanted to show him the view. Can you believe it? I'm fast asleep. And all of a sudden I hear, stomp, stomp, stomp. They're walking around on the roof. It sounded like my ceiling was going to fall in. So what did you do? Well, after about 15 minutes, I got dressed and went up there and asked them to be quiet. I was so mad. But they said they were sorry and that they hadn't realized I'd been able to hear them. I told them it was okay. But then, of course, after that, I couldn't go back to sleep. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? You can't fall asleep, and then before you know it, it's morning and the alarm clock is going off. 2. Kyle Hey, Kyle. So, how was the movie? Well, I didn't really enjoy it very much. Why? That film got great reviews. It's really popular. Oh, the movie was fine. I just got irritated by the people sitting in front of me. What happened? 
Well, first, they came in late. It took them a while to get into their seats. All this was happening right during an exciting part of the movie. And then they started talking. Oh, I hate when that happens. There were two of them, a man and a woman. The man had seen the movie before. And get this, he was telling the woman the entire story. Like they were the only two people in the theater. Did you do anything about it? Well, no, but another person asked them to be quiet. Did that work? No, they just started arguing. Their voices were getting louder and louder. One guy was saying, you shouldn't talk during the movie. And the other guy was saying, I paid my money and you can't tell me what to do. So what finally happened? Well, I went and found the usher because it was getting out of hand. Everyone quieted down eventually, but it was too late. They had already ruined the movie for me. Did you get all the information or you want to listen one more time? One more time. One more time, please. please. Okay. Unit 10, The Art of Complaining. Lesson A, page 80. Exercise 2, It Really Irks Me. Part A. Listen to Jane and Kyle talking about irritating situations. What bothered each person? 1. Jane. Hi, Jane. Say, are you okay? You're looking a bit tired. Oh, I am. It's my neighbors. Oh, so they're acting up again, huh? Yep, unfortunately they are. What is it this time? Loud music again? Well, not exactly. You've been to my apartment, right? Yeah, I've been there once. It's a nice place. Well, thank you. So you remember I live on the top floor, right? Well... Last night, around midnight, my neighbors decided to go up on the roof. The roof? What for? Apparently they had this guy in from out of town and they wanted to show him the view. Can you believe it? I'm fast asleep and all of a sudden I hear, stomp, stomp, stomp. They're walking around on the roof. It sounded like my ceiling was going to fall in. So what did you do? Well, after about 15 minutes, I got dressed and went up there and asked them to be quiet. I was so mad. But they said they were sorry and that they hadn't realized I'd been able to hear them. I told them it was okay. But then, of course, after that, I couldn't go back to sleep. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? You can't fall asleep, and then before you know it, it's morning and the alarm clock is going off. 2. Kyle Hey, Kyle. So, how was the movie? Well, I didn't really enjoy it very much. Why? That film got great reviews. It's really popular. Oh, the movie was fine. I just got irritated by the people sitting in front of me. What happened? Well, first, they came in late. It took them a while to get into their seats. All this was happening right during an exciting part of the movie. And then, they started talking. Oh, I hate when that happens. There were two of them, a man and a woman. The man had seen the movie before. And get this, he was telling the woman the entire story. Like they were the only two people in the theater. Did you do anything about it? Well, no, but another person asked them to be quiet. Did that work? No, they just started arguing. Their voices were getting louder and louder. One guy was saying, you shouldn't talk during the movie. And the other guy was saying, I paid my money and you can't tell me what to do. So what finally happened? Well, I went and found the usher because it was getting out of hand. Everyone quieted down eventually, but it was too late. They had already ruined the movie for me. Okay, so what do you have? What bothers Jane? Jane has a noiser neighbor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because really? uh -huh. your, your neighbor uh, had a party. 
until um, until late. Okay, her neighbors are noisy. They had a party until late. She couldn't sleep for next day. It's pretty good. Anything else? Anything else? She tried to say uh, Unit 10. Say them. Uh huh. Uh, say them that uh, they can be quiet because uh, she can sleep. And when the his not her neighbors uh, uh, uh silent say it uh huh uh, she have insomnia <laughs> she can't oh. sleep oh uh, yes again. Uh -huh. yes pretty good so they're let's see her neighbors made a lot of noise and woke her up. Yes, so that is correct, Alexandra and Magdiel. Thank you so much. So basically, her neighbors made a lot of noise and wake her up. Then she asked them to be quiet um, because they were making some noise. They said that they didn't realize that they were being noisy. But then she couldn't sleep. And at the next day, she had to go to work. So, yes, pretty good. Thank you so much. Now, what about Kyle? What, what is the, the thing that bothers him? Any notes about Kyle? In this case, uh, Kyle has two person next to next to him and that one of them um had seen had seen movie before and he's talking about that and um they are they are talking and talking and doesn't have that he he can he can listen, he can hear, or he can watch the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Magdiel. Anything else? Does somebody else have more details about Kyle? Uh, he also uh, told uh, that they uh, the persons two persons in the movie theater uh, start to uh, fight and uh, argue uh-huh argue sorry argue i uh, argue mm -hmm. argue and the the man that was talking uh, was very angry with the comments uh, that he needs to to uh, talk outside. Uh, oh yeah, they were very rude. And other other people around around there um say, hey, please be quiet. Uh huh. Some other people, some other um, spectator asked them to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Yes, people talked during a movie and ran it for him. Yes, that was the main thing about that complaint. So very good, Alexandra and Magdia. Thank you so much. Uh, you did a very good job with this listening. Now, in part B, we're going to listen again and discuss these questions. By the way, do you have any question about this uh, listening? No? No questions? 
Okay, so let's listen again and discuss these questions. Um, we're going to develop this one in, in groups and then we're going to share. If you, um, let's see, let's take notes and write the questions on your notebook and then we're going to listen and answer them and share notes. Whose situation do you think was more annoying, Jane's or Kyle's? Sorry, teacher. What does it mean annoying? A annoying, yes. Um, that is a very good question. So we have a couple. Tenemos, uh, tenemos esta frase aquí en rojo que dice, it really hurts me. Y tenemos también a annoying. Para expresar eh, eh, cuando algo nos molesta, hay diferentes maneras. Una es decir que algo como aquí, it really hurts me. Eh, hurts es como a fastidiar. Ah, eso realmente me fastidia. Hurts me. Entonces ese es el significado de hurts. Fastidiar. Fastidiar. Y annoying es similar. Es cuando algo le es molesto me molesta o algo que me hace sentir, me fastidia. Me. Ajá. Entonces son similares en meaning. Earth es fastidiar y annoying es algo fastidioso o molesto, algo que le disgusta, le hace sentir eh, es decir, molestia o disgusto. Así es que ambas son, son similares en, en meaning. Es fastidiar o molestar, algo que le hace sentir fastidioso o molesto. Eh, y el annoying se le puede aplicar a una persona, que decir esta persona es annoying, um, que una persona es fastidiosa, se le dice annoying. O también a una situación. El hurt no se le puede aplicar a una persona, pero sí a una situación. Esa es la diferencia entre ellos dos. Pero ambos son fastidiar o molestar. Algo que le fastidia o le molesta. Puede utilizar herbs o annoying. Y si se lo va a aplicar como adjetivo a una persona, decir que la persona es, solamente podemos usar annoying para una persona. Decir, oh, por ejemplo, algún sobrino. <laughs> pues, so you can say my niece or my nephew is annoying. Son fastidiosos. <laughs> no sé si respondí bien su pregunta. Yes, teacher. I get it. Okay, good. Um, so let's take notes. Whose situation do you think was more annoying, James or Kyle's? Then question number two. Who do you think handled the situation better, Jane or Kyle? How would you have reacted in each situation? Esas preguntas, lo, esto lo tienen en el, en el um, PowerPoint que les mandé. Entonces, igual, si quieren, pueden tomar notas de las preguntas de su notebook. Y si no, pues ahí lo tienen en el PowerPoint. Vamos a escuchar otra vez para luego que discutan las preguntas en grupo y cómo responderlas. Page 80. Exercise 2. It really irks me. Part B. Listen again. Discuss the questions. 1. Jane. Hi, Jane. Say, are you okay? You're looking a bit tired. Oh, I am. It's my neighbors. Oh, so they're acting up again, huh? Yep, unfortunately they are. What is it this time? Loud music again? Well, not exactly. You've been to my apartment, right? Yeah, I've been there once. It's a nice place. Well, thank you. So you remember I live on the top floor, right? Well, last night around midnight, my neighbors decided to go up on the roof. The roof? What for? Apparently they had this guy in from out of town and they wanted to show him the view. Can you believe it? I'm fast asleep, and all of a sudden I hear, stomp, stomp, stomp. They're walking around on the roof, 
it sounded like my ceiling was going to fall in. So what did you do? Well, after about 15 minutes, I got dressed and went up there and asked them to be quiet. I was so mad. But they said they were sorry and that they hadn't realized I'd been able to hear them. I told them it was okay. But then, of course, after that, I couldn't go back to sleep. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? You can't fall asleep, and then before you know it, it's morning and the alarm clock is going off. 2. Kyle Hey, Kyle. So, how was the movie? Well, I didn't really enjoy it very much. Why? That film got great reviews. It's really popular. Oh, the movie was fine. I just got irritated by the people sitting in front of me. What happened? Well, first, they came in late. It took them a while to get into their seats. All this was happening right during an exciting part of the movie. And then they started talking. Oh, I hate when that happens. There were two of them, a man and a woman. The man had seen the movie before. And get this, he was telling the woman the entire story. Like they were the only two people in the theater. Did you do anything about it? Well, no, but another person asked them to be quiet. Did that work? No, they just started arguing. Their voices were getting louder and louder. One guy was saying, you shouldn't talk during the movie. And the other guy was saying, I paid my money and you can't tell me what to do. So what finally happened? Well, I went and found the usher because it was getting out of hand. Everyone quieted down eventually, but it was too late. They had already ruined the movie for me. Okay, now let's get in group for a couple of minutes so that you can discuss the questions. And then we're going to share what you um what you discussed in the main section. Just let me stop sharing so I can create the breakout room. All right. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. What do you think about the first one? I think kite is more annoying. What about you? I think the both situation was annoying. Okay. 
Yes, both situations were annoying. Were. Yes, they were annoying, but I guess that hmm, Kyle's situation was the most annoying. It's okay, you pay for a movie ticket to enjoy a movie. You go out of your house and see people reading the whole movie, uh, the having arguments, and then they ruin a moment that you prepared, that you think of, and you paid for. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's it. Well, you might have different opinions. But so, uh, for yes. you both. Yes, that's right. And mm -hmm. I have uh, one neighbor like that. <laughs> okay, is it noisy they, or or noisy? Oh, they they have party frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, they, they they live in front of me. Mm. And they don't care if you have to go to work next day. They just have their parties. They are loud. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't know, but it seems like a, a noisy neighbor is, is, is needed in, in every neighborhood. They, they must be a noisy neighbor. <laughs> like it's a must. Okay. And the rest of you, what do you think? Let's try to practice your speaking. Going to check the other room to see if they are practicing or if I have to move someone. <laughs> uh He's the name of uh, right? Kyle. Yes. Sorry? Kyle is the name. The uh, man's yeah, name. is the name okay. of the boy. Uh -huh. Okay, and Kyle only uh, have the frustration inside and mm -hmm. he doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And for you? that he reached the usher and that si ahí que había ido a decirle al usher que que voy que fuera a ver el relajo eh, ahí les escribí usher eh, ah, se usher. les escribí en el chat eso saben el significado de usher no el usher es la persona en, eh, que es el acomodador en el cine los que le dicen a dónde está su asiento, los que están asistiendo en el cine, se llaman usher. Uh -huh. Entonces, according to, uh, de, de acuerdo con listening, él fue a buscar al usher y le dijo del relajo, pero ya les había arruinado la película a todos. Uh -huh. And for you, Alex? <laughs> well...
Okay, I see that everybody's back again. Let me check the breakout rooms. Everybody's out of the rooms. Yes. Okay, I know that you were having uh, sharing your opinions about the listening. Unfortunately, our time is over. So we're going to have more practice, more vocabulary for Monday. In the meantime, try to complete the exercise from section one to the midterm and section three. And uh, see you on Monday. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, teacher. You're See welcome. you on Monday. See you on Monday. Thank Take you. Off. I hope you enjoy your weekend. You do the same. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Sleep well.